Hello and welcome to Offspring Magazine, the podcast. I'm your host, Shrinath Ramkumar. In this week's episode, it's a really interesting one. We talk about sustainability again, but we talk it directly with a farmer who works on a farm and he tries to apply sustainable practices to his farming. We talk to Gil van Dijk, who runs a farm in the north of Germany, and he talks to us a lot in detail about how his vision of sustainability is and how he measures sustainability in his own farm, as well as how the world is actually fed by small farmers more than by these large conglomerates. Anyway, it's a very interesting episode, and I think you all will enjoy it for sure. So see you on the other side. Khil, thanks a lot for joining us today on this episode of the Offspring Podcast. It's a real pleasure to have you with us. So l- let's just jump straight in. Maybe you can quickly introduce yourself and what you do. Yes, I'm I'm Khil van Dijk. Um, I um, uh, work on on the farm with my wife for over twelve years now. Mm-hmm. <coughs> we have an uh, organic organic um, animal farm or we, we started as dairy farmers organic dairy farmers and um, we ask ourselves the question what is what is sustainable on on organic uh, dairy production and and that that brought us to a few questions that we try to answer now and and build our our company around it and and yeah I mean, that's very nice. I mean, so you mentioned you started off as an organic milk farmers, but then now you're doing a lot more sustainable farming practices and agriculture. So can you briefly explain what sustainable farming is? Yes, I have always a a small problem with talking about sustainable farming Mm -hmm. because, in my opinion, we, as a society, we don't understand the word sustainable. When, When you... When you um, when when you talk in in other um, in in, in uh, with with other words about li- like sustainable when w- when when you take the word violent or peace so when when we when I um, beat you mm-hmm. then I'm violent when I I beat you not so much then I'm not peaceful I'm less violent. So when you when you when we talk about sustainability, we 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 have to know that we we are not sustainable. And when we try to be a bit more sustainable, we we are not sustainable, but we are a bit less unsustainable. Definitely, so I yeah. I want to. That's that's important that we understand each other well because sustainability. Every company says yeah, we use a bit less plastic or thinner plastic bags, and now we are and much more sustainable as we were before. But but it's not true. So we have. I think we have to find a new word for for what we call sustainable now. And and then uh, we can use sustainable re- really for mm-hmm. for the thing that it is. Okay. So, uh, in terms of farming, so what what sets your style apart? So, yeah, I I thought a lot about uh, sustainable. What is sustainable on the way of farming that I do? Because it was called sustainable when you are organic dairy farmer. They say, oh, this is a sustainable way of farming. Mm-hmm. And I thought about what is what is sustainable on that what I do. And. Um, after a while, I I came to the idea that we have to um, bring back all that we do to the same um, measure um, uh, Einheit so, uh, mm. unit. Yeah. So, and and the the less bad unit I could um, think about was energy. When we when we uh, and then you can compare yeah. uh, farms with each other and yeah. you can compare your your products with with other products 
it's it's a it's a good metric to measure, right? Like what you consume and what you produce as well. Yes, and when 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 we talk about what is sustainable, then then you everyone can can imagine that when you use more than you produce, it's it's in definition not sustainable. You can do that organic. You can do that. Um, on a social way, you can do that on an economic way. So we, when, when we talk about sustainability nowadays, they say it has to be has a social compound and has an economical compound and it has a, what, what are the three things of, of sustainability in, in Germany? They say economic, social and um, environmental. Mm, yeah, yeah. So when the three things are okay, it's sustainable. But it isn't. When we use more than we produce, then we are not sustainable in in which way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and that that was the uh, the day that I started to think about different on on farming and and um, uh, started to to uh, make another farm of our our farm. Yeah, that's really nice to hear that it's a, it's a it's a good way to sort of really think about the the practices and the agricultural practices that you're f following and uh, it, it actually leads me to the question so did you find something interesting or a new way in which you could sort of make sure that what you're what you're producing and you're con the what you're consuming are at different levels so is that yes it's it's when you when you are a dairy farmer and you you kept cows uh, to to produce your um your your living so we, yeah. we sold milk and um and when you when you say oh we have to um count all our input and output in kilojoule mm -hmm. then you see that you have really really bad um numbers in your <laughs> your uh, farm and and um that's difficult for for a person they, they who whose whole life is oh, I want to want to hold cows and want to milk cows and I, I I'm a organic farmer and it's it's sustainable everyone says it's sustainable but I don't I don't see it I don't see that it is sustainable. Somewhat it reminds me of donut economics, right? It's like basically it should be a cycle that everything you use, like basically you have the overview of the whole cycle, right? What you produce. As you said, like for example, for the calves, you also take care of what happens to the calves, right? So everything you produce or you need is like one cycle, basically. You try to not add so much from the outside, I guess. This is yes, it is. W when you when you um, um, calculate your your farm in kilojoules, you know, I I buy uh, buy um, eight thousand liters of fuel every year. I I use forty thousand kilo kilo um, what stunden also was, uh, kilowatt hours yeah. kilowatt hours as uh, on on electricity and i buy um, mineral feed for my animals and, and, and all that stuff is energy mm -hmm. and then you you count i m sell so many calves uh, so many milk so many uh, cereals and that's energy also mm -hmm. and then you see there's a lot less energy that i sell as that i use on my farm and then, then I started to think about how can you produce more um, and, and as a in increase the produce production and decrease the input. Mm -hmm. and, and then I, c I came to um, uh, perennial, perennial uh, plants mm -hmm. that are the, the most efficient um, production units mm -hmm. because you have to plant it once most of them you don't have to m um, uh, give m any type of manure or yeah. something like that and the and and then that that's um, perennial plants are good in in composition with other perennial plants not not monoculture but yeah but, uh, a variety of, of types and, and that's um, where the idea idea of a, a food forest is is born mm -hmm. and um, 
then then I thought about what's the role of of animals. Why do we do we hold animals on our farm? Then maybe we have to switch over to a only agroforest farm and, and no animals. Mm -hmm. But but then we found out that that um, there are really um, uh, big big uh, amounts of, of materials that we can't use as as food as human beings in direct way and and animals are really good at at um, making out of of useless um, stuff for us as, as um, humans really high quality of of food mm -hmm. and and that that's the role of of the animals in the system so in a in an agroforest or in a in a uh, pasture mm -hmm. landscape, animals yeah. can help us to to earn the the energy that's growing over there. And yeah. and pasture lands are really um, important fields for for um, our climate mm -hmm. to produce um, oxygen and and uh, um, uh, fixing carbon yeah. in in the soil. And when we when we let all the um, the grasslands uh, grow to forest what what will happen when we don't keep animals on it uh, we will we will have less um, less of that function mm -hmm. and yeah and um, that's that's why we we can say you you can um, design a farm where you you keep animals to to use um, the 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 areas that are are really good for for mm -hmm. direct food production and and you can use that that um, ecosystem functions of of pasture lands yeah and and that's that's why they are here and then you have a plus in energy because yeah. when we let them walk on that pasture we don't have to mow it we don't have to um, um, Dung it, uh, so, so you don't have to dig it up because it like the animals mm. do it by their walking. Yeah, and we only have to to um, earn the the animals. So yeah. Uh, so basically, they the animals sort of reduce your fuel consumption. Yes. And yes. And production. So that, that's yeah. That's when when really we nice. design the right system with with uh, the the right amount of forest and the right amount of, of pasture. It it is possible that we we build in in twenty years a system that we can keep kept animals a year around outside yeah. they have cover enough from from trees in in uh, for sun and rain mm -hmm. and uh, they can feed themselves in in a big variety with mm -hmm. with young trees and grasses and and uh, oaks and, and yeah. stuff like that i guess the right ratio between the number of animals and the area right i guess also Yes, that's mm -hmm. so. We we don't have to keep animals to produce milk or to produce fl meat, yeah. but we have to use the animals to to uh, hold our um, uh, ecosystem healthy, and and we have to um, keep it in a stadium of the highest productivity. So yeah. when when they they um, eat a young tree or or. Uh, eat the leaves of a big, big um, strauch, also strunk uh, yeah. bush. 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 Yeah. So they 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 make a bit of room for a smaller plant that that produce uh, fruits or yeah. something like that. But how do you determine like how many uh, animals should grass on a certain area? Like I guess if it's too many animals, right? Maybe it's also not so beneficial, but too little. Also, you don't use the full potential, right? Yeah, that's that's what yeah. we have to learn. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's um, the problem is that in agriculture we have split it up. We we have um, uh, people that know everything about chickens and people that know everything about cows or apple trees or, uh, but we don't have much people they know about ecosystems mm -hmm. and how yeah. what's what's the role of our animal farm uh, animal um, farm animals mm -hmm. in ecosystems and yeah. how do you build an ecosystem by yourself yeah. and, and and that's that's a, a big role for for science mm -hmm. and and a big role for for farmers itself yeah. to learn more about how can we 
farm sustainable not, yeah. not only less unsustainable but truly sustainable yes, yes. that's actually a re really nice point like w when you mention uh, that you know you you try to actually make sort of uh, calculations based on all of these different parameters that you're seeing so it's a very scientific approach to farming and actually it's, it's quite nice and like one thing that you mentioned that I would like a little bit more clarity on is you mentioned agroforestry can you maybe explain what that means because that term I mean I'm not very familiar with that term okay yeah an, an agroforest is a composition of of um, different plants that that help each other uh, to, to grow or stay healthy and and it's uh, designed on a way that we can produce the most um, amount the highest amount of, of food per hectare or per square meter and and it's not the highest amount of apple or the highest amount of, of pears or the high am highest amount of grasses mm -hmm. so but but all together we can produce more in in um, energy amount of energy than one hectare of only pears or only apples mm -hmm. and we 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 earn uh, earned earn more mm -hmm. um, our harvest harvest more uh, than than um, than any any type of of agriculture but spread on 600 different varieties of of food yeah but together it's more energy than one hectare of mice or yeah definitely which yeah, yeah. It's interesting. I mean yeah so i mean like uh, because you mentioned that you you do it in collaboration with like like a forest like you know like right next to like a forested area so because uh is there like like a special uh, property of the region next to the forested area um why 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 you use forest y yeah i mean so yes. what's the advantage of using the forest yes right? the forest is using a forest is is um why you can use different layers mm -hmm. when you when you only have pasture and you concentrate on your the highest amount of grass production then you have one layer from zero to 30 f or 50 centimeters mm -hmm. but um above that 50 centimeters they can grow um apples or, or yeah. uh, hazel nuts mm -hmm. and above the hazel nuts they they can grow um uh castania so yeah so chestnuts chestnuts yeah and and above there th you can grow um oaks or, or yeah but so you apply this principle right from the forest in agriculture this is what it's forest like this is what makes it a forest right these Yes. Yes, and you you have to yeah. you have to design a system that you can can collect as many as sunlight as possible, and you yeah. use the photosynthesis as as in its best possible way. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and uh, a forest edge has the most square centimeter to to collect sun yeah. um, sunlight, and that's that's the the only um, input that we don't have to calculate because yeah. sunlight is is an input in our system and you can say yeah when you don't count it um you you are not not uh, counting fairly but when you count it or uh, when you don't use it 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 wouldn't wouldn't be used in any way yeah. so um that's that's uh, that's an amount of energy that we don't have to count as yeah. as a mm -hmm. direct input in our system. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, because sunlight is like something that's there. Yeah, so it, it is there, and when yeah. it isn't there, we we, yeah. we don't have to speak about <laughs> this. this uh, <laughs> so yeah. then we have other problems. So it's learning. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Much more complicated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's learning from nature, basically, right? Uh, in a way. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it's so using uh, using natural yeah. processes to to produce food yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a good point. so now we uh, talked a lot about the conceptual ideas right but we were also wondering like on an everyday basis like how does your everyday work look like or an example day look like yeah everyday work um i, I n n not 
not any uh, day of the year is the same. Mm. So I, I've I've lots of lots of um, parts of the of the farm. Yeah, that's that's a difficulty that comes through when when I only have um, dairy cows. I know I have to milk my cows. I have to feed my cows, and when I'm I'm ready with that, it's it's good, and I don't have to n have really much knowledge around it. But when I um, started to say I want to um, uh, hold my own uh, steer calves, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then I have to think about how how do they grow? Mm -hmm. Did they grow on a different way as a dairy cow, and they yeah. they have to treat it on a different way as a dairy cow and when I have them big enough to slaughter and no one wants to buy them because it's pasture based um, meat and it's not um, like the, the, the classic meat that the, the big industry is mm -hmm. knowing they don't want to buy it from me so I have yeah. to do it by myself yeah. but then you have to think about how do I sell meat and how do I process meat yeah and how do I process my my milk when I want to sell it? We, we yeah. have the the calves are with the dairy cows in one herd, so we produce less milk, but we have higher costs. It's another another quality of milk. Yeah. But you have to think about all the things, mm -hmm. and that's my part here um, on the farm to to um, combine all the different. Uh, uh, parts and all the different um, yeah, what pieces, are strategies, the strategies, mm. yeah, and and to 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 see what what do we need now? What's the next step? Mm -hmm. And and now we have an own slaughterhouse, yeah. so I have to start at it. I have to know how to slaughter. I have to think about why we do that, what we do, mm -hmm. and then try to find someone or those people that that can do the the work on daily basis and and have to. Um, uh, make the next step. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's it's like a constant learning process. Mm -hmm. So every every day is never the same. So you always try to learn new things by 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 actually doing them. Yes, and it's it's, it's, it's of course it's also I I um, come out of my bed in the morning and I have to look after the animals. I have to yeah. um, feed them or, but but. Um, that that's what we do together with uh, lots of of people now. Yeah. Yeah. I was also wondering. I mean, now we, we talked about like your daily life. We were also thinking, do you have an idea how the typical day of one of the cows would look like? Um, the herd and the typical herd of the cow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have an idea how <laughs> did the day look like. It's it's. What um, they do during the day. I yeah. I would think it's a bit boring day, but. But cows are really good with boring days, so <laughs> they they <laughs> like boring days. Yeah. You see, when when they have a uh, a day where something else happens, when they when they walk through another field or or are transported to another field, that's not really the best day for a cow. Yeah. A cow can have uh, as a they 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 like eat to on chill the pasture. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. <laughs> and, and they when they have food. Yeah. And and no direct sunlight, not too hot, not too cold. Then then, then the cow is happy with boring, but <laughs> with <laughs> <a> boring <laughs> life. <laughs> but as you mentioned, like most of the cows actually outside most of the year, right? Or yeah. some of them, yeah, 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 on the fields. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's quite cool. So what they what they exp their experience is on the field. Maybe they see other animals, wild animals right. walk <laughs> walk around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh but yeah, I mean, it's 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 quite nice that like you you have a good balance of uh, all the techniques going on. So you know, in terms of also in terms of a balance in terms of energy or like in terms of more energy being produced. So wh what are the major challenges that you face when you you know so when you originally set out to do this? What were the biggest challenges you faced, and what are the challenges you face now when you're you know you said you got your own slaughterhouse? So what are the big challenges now mm -hmm. with uh, these? Yeah, the the biggest challenge is to to combine the different um, different uh, different knowledge that you need and and um, the the fähigkeiten, also the, the what you abilities, capabilities, mm, yeah, or knowledge. So um. you you have to 
to to learn it by yourself or mm-hmm. or find people that that can do it and on the way that you you want wanted to to have it on on your uh, farm and you have to deal with governments that that make laws and rules mm-hmm. on that, that are really based on the conventional way of farming and on the on the um they they fully have accept that less sustainable is sustainable enough so and really sustainable there there are no no laws and and um strategies of the government to to implement a real sustainable agriculture or a food production system yeah mm-hmm. and and that's uh in in food production re- we are really um uh specialized so everyone has a r- really small part of the chain that he's doing really good but in really big um big amounts of of uh, uh processing of, of food and and that's that's a big problem because when when you produce in an agro forest a bit of these and a bit of that and a bit of so there's no market for it you can you can sell a um a truck full of cereals but you can't sell uh a bag full of cereals here and so no one wants to buy it and and you have to build up your own um y- your own structure that you can sell mm-hmm. a few chestnuts and you can sell a few strawberries mm-hmm. or um a little bit of milk and yeah. and a little bit of meat and and you have to deal with the problems that meat production or m- or a slaughterhouse you have really much rules mm-hmm. and and it costs a lot of money but you don't have so much animals and you don't want Mm-hmm. slaughter very much animals mm-hmm. but you always have to find the balance between what what is uh, economical um um uh, so what what can you doable i mean yeah mm-hmm. what's doable on on uh, on the economic mm-hmm. um yeah. rentable I mean. yeah. Yeah. yeah and and that's the that's the biggest thing what you ha- what you have to deal with you have to build your own structure behind your your farm yeah so, y- so you're basically mostly in direct contact with the customers, right? You're not like uh, in contract with some supermarkets or something. It's more no, no, no. direct. It's so yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think that's that's actually quite interesting because so you as a producer can actually get in contact with the consumer. Mm-hmm. So as a consumer, I- will I be able to tell a difference between, let's say, uh, l- like some a product produced in this farm and something that I get from the supermarket? Yeah, you can definitely uh, taste a different and and um, uh, see a different and and you feel a different when you know where it comes from and how yeah. it's grown or produced. That's that's a complete other way of experience your your food than um, buy it anonymous and. Uh <laughs> And yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah, I think yeah. it also makes a difference, right? If the cows were relaxed during their life, right? I think, I believe also that you can taste it if the if the uh, animals were like in small stalls and under constant stress, right? Or if they had their space to move and. Yeah, there's yeah. definitely a lot of of um, um, influences on the way we we kept animals mm-hmm. or or grow fruits. <laughs> Um, that 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 influences the quality of y- of your food. Mm-hmm. So yeah. so an apple isn't an apple, or or a, b- a piece of meat isn't a piece of meat. Mm-hmm. And and you you will feel it or or um, um, recognize it on a, on a way, mm-hmm. but but that's a part of of science that we have to f- find a way how we can measure that type of of difference between an apple and an apple Mm -hmm. right but do you think for example um we could would it be doable if whole germany would for example really go into sustainable farming right do you think it would give enough produce to like um produce the same amount that we currently produce to nurture the people do you think it's possible or i i think it's uh, we have to ask ourselves the question if if we need the amount of food that we produce right. now yeah. Yeah. 
for that first of all, and then we have ask to ask ourselves the question when we need very huge amount or the big amounts of energy to produce this this um, amount of food, then we have to ask ourselves the question where does that energy come from? Mm -hmm. And when we talk about sustainability or or um, um, Ausstoß, also uh, you mean from uh, um, toxic gases, gases or, or yeah, or yeah. yeah. Toxic Did output, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, mm. uh, um, uh, CO2. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, we always talk about it's the um, emissions, you mean? The emissions. output, the emission of it. Yeah. But on all the emission, there's a, a use of energy before. So when we know f to produce one kilojoule of food, in w which way, fruit or meat or milk or um, uh, vegetables, we use 10 or 20 kilojoules of energy, yeah. then we have to ask ourselves the question, where does that energy come from to produce that amount of food? And then, then it's the question, can we produce enough food to feed the world? It's not really a big, big question because when we don't have to uh, enough energy or right. we we can't, um, uh, we we can't do that as society. We we can't emission so so many uh, gases yeah. uh, longer. Mm -hmm. Then we have to to ask ourselves what's what is the way to produce food, or or to to um, use less energy as society. And when we know for food production, we use huge amount of energy and we can design a system where we, where we produce energy, where we have more output and input, then we have to do that. Yeah. So, and then um, when you, when you um, theoretic, theoretical, how you say it? In, in theory, yeah. uh, um, an agroforest can produce, um, uh, 10,600 kilos food per year. Yeah. That's more than one hectare mice. Yeah. So the, the, the amounts of food that we can produce in a, in, on, a, on a good ecosystem, good designed ecosystem, is higher yeah. than what we produce now on our fields. Yeah. And, and when we uh, think about how do we use the production of our fields mm. nowadays, we eighty percent of the arable mm -hmm. farming lands on the world are used for animal feed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we we grow cereals to feed an animal. Yeah, and when we have um, ten thousand kilos of cereals, we can eat it as human beings in direct way. Yeah, mm -hmm. and but we as human beings throw it uh, to pigs or cows, mm -hmm. so they produce a bit more milk or grow a bit faster Factor, yeah but then we have uh, not a tenth of the, the amount of of food that we had before yeah so the the problem on the world is not to grow enough food yeah. we have way too many uh, food when we when we produce uh, at least on in at least in the western uh, hemisphere let's say no no it's, it's globally the, the most the most food yeah globally is yeah. grown now on agroforest system yeah so small farmers feed the world. We <laughs> we always say, oh, the the big, the big uh, yeah. farms in Russia and um, in America or, or Australia, yeah. that are the they feed the world. But when you when you really see the amounts of people that eat from small farmers, yeah. that are more people on the world than they eat from the big farmers, yeah. B because the big farmers mainly produce animal food. Yeah to grow m meat animals mm -hmm. and, and stuff like that. Yeah. And it's a, a ridiculous way of producing food because mm -hmm. it costs lots of energy. And that energy, the use of that energy, um, we, we can't use it otherwise. Um, otherwise. And uh, that's, that's why food production and agriculture is one of the main issues that we have to... Yeah. Um, um, and we can as a develop as a society, develop as yeah. a society. Yeah. we have to think about how do we grow our food yeah mm -hmm. and why do we grow our food that's a, that's a very nice uh, point to ponder 
so to say it's like it, it's it's a it's a thinker right you really need to so because every purchase you make of any item for food or for whatever purpose it's basically like stamping your ballot box it's like it's like it's like voting on saying this type i support by 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 giving it money yes so and i think that's that's a good point for i think most of the listeners to actually understand that supporting uh, this type of su- like truly sustainable or a little bit n- not just a little bit unsustainable or a little bit you know, less unsensis- unsustainable techniques and uh, i think that that's a good point so you know if you want to tell the audience the public something what what would be your uh, word of recommendation what would you say to the public um i would say that everyone has to has to search in in his or her way or a part of of work to truly sustainability you have to think about why do am i doing what i do and and what's the what's the sustainable or not sustainable issue of of yeah. my my job yeah and and when everyone thinks about that for himself and not always looking to other people and say oh he is he's very unsustainable and that mm-hmm. makes me more sustainable yeah <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> yeah sustainability no is not a look <laughs> to yourself and what yeah. you're, you're doing by yourself and then then when you when you buy food you have to think about why do i buy food and where do i buy food and and ask the people where you buy your food why are you doing that what you're doing yeah. why would i or should i buy your food and not not food from someone else and and good sellers would say you can also buy from someone else you don't have to buy it by me but you have to ask the other the same question why does he grow the food and in in everything what you do when you have to when you build a house you have to find a a a builder that you can ask why are you building a house yeah and how are you building a house and and why doing you why you do that on the way you do it yeah when when he thought about it she thought about it and can explain how and why then we are on on the right way yeah and uh, do you have any advice like how people can find a local farmer in their region is there some kind of r- register where i can look or is it more like you know can you have any advice how to find someone in the area no i don't uh it's by right like whatever you know about yeah. or by chance okay. no but i mean i think this would be a good start like, yeah, like if yeah. somebody wants to build let's say like a good uh, database of identifying where you know like good sort of sustainable farming practices are practiced and these farmers are selling at say at these type of markets yeah but the, the of difficulty markets. of of a, a database with sustainable farmers mm-hmm. is there are no sustainable farmers <laughs> at this moment <laughs> yeah <laughs> so <laughs> our farm is isn't sustainable <laughs> yeah, as well exactly, we yeah. we are working on it yeah. and we we think that we know what sustainable is and how we work on on a on a farm that could be sustainable in the future yeah so we we can make a register of <laughs> sustainable farms because there there are no uh, <laughs> uh, sustainable farms maybe the, the small farms in yeah. in um in africa or india or or in china and in, in, uh, th- there are lots of sustainable small farms but but not here in in our region mm-hmm. so we we have to ask on and think about it and then we we can push each other mm-hmm. to sustainable way of of working and living and producing yeah it's a work in progress yeah right yeah yeah, yeah. but w- but we have to be honest and and re- definite the the word sustainable for ourselves yeah and and now we we use the word sustainable for marketing and for yeah. for greenwashing <laughs> but it is not really w- w- we didn't thought about it one more question is uh, so how can someone find you to buy food from you where do where do people find you here on the farm yeah and on the market in osnabrück okay and uh, so the, the the farmers market that yeah the farmers market yeah 
it's a weekly occurrence I yeah imagine, right yeah okay so we it, it, it is um lots of people say yeah you have to to make a, a website and you have yeah. to be more present on social media that l people can find you but it's not not our goal that the most of people find us as yeah. our goal is to to think about how we can produce food on a sustainable way yeah work on that i mean and also people traveling long distances to find you isn't really sustainable either. yes <laughs> yeah. of course yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we need yeah. local local people or or yeah. people that are in in our in the region for a short time and say oh yeah. it's nice we, we learn a lot and and yeah. ask questions to us yeah why we do it because every time that we explain what we do and why we do that mm -hmm. we learn and think about it again and again and again and it's yeah. always when you think about something a hundred times that that 101 time you think ah it wasn't a, a part of that w was really yeah good thought about or yeah then you see see it it yeah. could be uh, 150 times yeah. but, but <laughs> You, you need to think over it again and again and y the more you explain it to other people mm -hmm. so people don't have to to um uh, find us yeah but, but they have to ask other people yeah why they do what they do exactly and how they do it all right that's a, that's a very interesting point and maybe we'll 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 say we would really like to thank you for giving us your time and, you know, sitting together with us and do this uh, like discussion. It was I really enjoyed. Yeah, I really learned quite a lot. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure that uh, people would also uh, these people who are listening would also try to think about why they do what they do. And they ask this question and what what really how, what metric do, do you use to measure sustainability is, is something that everyone should ask themselves. Yeah. I think that's that's a very very good point and on that note I'd like to thank you for joining us today and it's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah. Thank you for your time too. Well, I hope you all enjoyed this discussion as much as we did. It was really eye-opening to say the least. Anyway, we have a lot more episodes coming your way very soon. It's on a weekly basis if you've not noticed and if not stay with us and see you in the next few weeks until then stay safe stay healthy bye bye after magazine the podcast is brought to you by the max frank p18 and the science communication working group from the after magazine the intro to music composed by shinas number one the printer singles composed by gustavo Carrizo. if you'd like to give us any feedback comments suggestions please feel free to follow us on twitter instagram at after magazine the podcast or mpphc.net podcast and Write to us at offspring.podcasts at phcnet.mpg.de. Until ne next week, stay safe, stay healthy. Bye-bye.